So in terms of, uh, of sensors, and I'll move a little bit faster through those as we covered most of it through the questions. There's a few rules about our sensors. So the first one is that we never sit in data path. That, that's the rule number one of the servers. Hardware, software, same principle, uh, and that, that's really a hard one. And this applies to anyone who wants to develop a, sun, a sensor uh, for titration within Cisco and in the future uh, partners. We get everything and we do not want sampling. Uh, sampling is an error condition in, our, uh, in the way we work. It's not a normal behavior around the platform. So we insist on that. And one thing that's especially important, let's say for more for European countries, uh, is the fact that we never collect any payload uh, in a packet. And the way we do that is uh, we extract uh, in the ASIC from the pipeline directly. We go and search in shared memory space and we pull information out. And on the software sensor, we do take 160 bytes of every packet, but we process the 160 bytes on the host before we send anything out. So when something gets out of the platform, we can guarantee 100% there is absolutely no user, no payload information inside the, inside the packet. And that's how we reach the 1% of bandwidth that we're talking about. In terms of security, so we use mutual certificate authentication everywhere. Uh, all the certificate thing is taken care of by the cluster. So cluster will rotate certificates every 60 days to avoid entropy. It's going to manage the life cycle of those. So there's absolutely nothing to do uh, uh, from the operation side. Uh, and we do as well code sign uh, uh, the binary that's running. So we do know exactly if it has been tampered, what, how it has been tampered, sends back a warning to the cluster around it. In terms of ASIC, so if you imagine, so this is valid for uh, the Nexus 9K platform. So uh, ACE3, LSCs are uh, Sugar Bowl and Davos for the names that were, uh, that were used internally. This is the normal pipeline. So that's where basically your, your workload, your traffic is going through. Um, we actually put flow cache within the same ASIC in a different module. And this module has access to the shared memory of the parser and the shared memory of the lookup units. And from there, we just get what we were interested in. And that's how we can see everything at line rates on those platforms. One important thing, you notice Flowcatch doesn't have any construct to go to the CPU. In this diagram, it's completely independent from the CPU. Why? Because the reason why this arrow is bidirectional is that when we do collect information, we re-inject it back directly in the pipeline. So the, why do we do that? Is in fact, CPU becomes a bottleneck. If we, start, if we have to send all the telemetry traffic to a pro, the processor to package up a packet, it doesn't work very well. So as we want to stream telemetry out, we actually package everything inside the ASIC when we stream it out. So you're originating the packets that go to the collector and further on in the ASIC, not on the CPU. Exactly. So that's how we read it. It's impossible to reach the scale otherwise. That's where uh, they like, assume the classical uh, like NetFlow problems or the... Sampled NetFlow at one. Absolutely. It's the yeah, actual. <laughs> it's exactly that. So that's the platforms. If you hit them, 92, 9300 with the X, that's all you need to remember. So it's only on the new Nexus switches for the moment. So they've been shipping since, uh, I believe, May last year. So uh, all this generation. Not on the routers or anything? No, not today. So we, are we working with those groups? Yes. Um, are they going to release something that we never know? Like catch the PMs and ask them. <laughs> in terms of the network, of the, sorry, of the software, this is what we do in the software sensor. So we, never, we don't sit in the kernel. Uh, that's really something we wanted to avoid because just our customer told us that if you do that, like I'm not deploying anything ever, so OK. And the way we do it is that we use the LPCAP driver on, uh, on Linux to be able to take the information out. So that's part of the kernel. It's already there. Uh, all our customers so far have it already deployed. Uh, so we just need to tap into this information to pull the packets out. But at the same time, uh, we're very low on CPU. Because the other thing is that we all know the reputation of sensors. Like put a sensor, it's like McAfee on your laptop. 30% CPU idle, uh, uh, drives you mad. And what do you end up by doing? Killing it. So we want to avoid that. So our CPUs are extremely low uh, in terms of resources. Uh, like you define how much you want us to use. Like give me 3%, I use 3%. And, uh, and then we throttle the CPU like that. 
And that's the only case in which you could end up with sample data because the CPU uh, may request the sensor to reduce uh, the bandwidth. But there are lots of conditions before this hits it. In terms of how it runs, uh, it runs in two different kind of uh, environments. So we do need root privilege to install. And by, what I'm saying is valid for Windows or Linux. It's exactly the same way uh, of doing it in, in both cases. Let's say we set in low privilege mode for any kind of information collection and or anything that's related to OpenSSL uh, and things like that, because that's where you have potentially the most risk there. And then we just put a very, very, very lean uh, sensor for the high privilege mode, whether it's enforcement or data or data collection there. So there we nothing that is statically built, not anything we don't need, we don't put it there. So that's basically all the Windows and the Linux flavors that you, uh, that you have. And finally, for the sensors where you don't really, uh, let's say, we call them legacy. You can debate on if the term legacy is correct or not. AX, Solaris, HPUX, uh, those kind of platforms. Uh, ZOS, exactly. <laughs> the wonderful system that we all love to work with. Uh, we, we kind of do a... Um, I won't say a hack, but we have a way that where we, instead of getting the per packet telemetry, uh, what we do is that we fall back to a flow level telemetry, where we look for uh, flow, uh, source destination, five tuples uh, as usual, process owner, we send the information out. Now, the benefit of this model is that you can do it uh, on any kind of platform. And quickly, from the pipeline, and that you may imagine this is a, this is already a very trimmed down version of the actual pipeline architecture. <laughs> but to give you an idea of how we split it and the kind of engineering we put into the, into the platform. So this is your, your sensor. This is your enforcement point. So if you're using enforcement on the sensor agent, this is your browser if you're a user. And the different levels of access you have. Sensors talk to a bunch of collector. Huh? Um, this, the load share the flow, uh, one, sorry, one flow goes to one collector in both directions. Collector sends the information down to an ingestion pipeline. The pipeline is there going to configure, to transform the flows into conversations. So we see both sides, we put them together. We say, hey, this is a conversation. And then from the pipeline, uh, we start doing the other things. So for example, ADM, application maps, and things like that, what Tim showed you. Uh, we use it on the ADM. Uh, anything like annotation, uh, all the, the flow features and so on uh, down there. And uh, we put uh, all the flattening as well at this point in a pipeline. So all those are kind of continuously running across the platform there. We do have titration apps. So that's uh, basically you develop your own uh, kind of app running on top of titration. So this is entirely jailed, uh, as you can see, uh, inside it to limit access on this point. And then after, we give, there's a, a massive storage, it's a tiered storage with different elements and so on uh, that's there on the platform. And that would provide you uh, basically access to uh, the whole information available in the platform. So that's kind of the nutshell view uh, uh, of the architecture. And for this, if you want to explain how we split. So you might have covered at this point something, at the, or covered this at some point, but how is this transported over the network? Is it point to point? Is it a pub subsystem since you're installing agents? How does it know where the agent controller is? I mean, how, does, how are you doing all that? So from the agent to the collectors, uh, right? Uh, this, uh, this kind of communication. So we, uh, we basically, it's flow cache. So we use the same flow cache technology uh, there to export. So there's two things. Sensor is connected uh, to uh, an agent controller, which is uh, an HTTPS connection. That's a control channel. So this one is open uh, consist constantly, and the agent establishes the connection to the controller. So, so that's a point-to-point, -point. So right? It's not like a pub sub system. It's actually no. okay. All right. Anything we do related to pub sub and Kafka and so on after is done inside uh, the platform. We don't. The agent is meant to be as bare as possible. That's the idea. 